Hi, my name is Nick Sedeghi, and today I'm going to be speaking about bisoprolol. Bisoprolol can also go by its brand name, Zabita. It belongs to a family of drugs known as beta blockers. It's commonly used to treat hypertension, and it works at a basic level by decreasing the heart rate and blood pressure. Patient counseling. Here we have our indication and administration of bisoprolol. The FDA has approved it for uses in hypertension, but it's also used off-label for chronic angina pectoris, congestive heart failure, as well as migraine prophylaxis. For the administration of this medication, we're going to be taking it by mouth, with or without food. Here are the common side effects that patients might run into while taking bisoprolol. As you can see, they're quite rare, but I'll list them nonetheless. For cardiovascular, patients might experience chest pain. For neurologic effects, patients might run into a little bit of fatigue or tiredness. For GI effects, patients might experience diarrhea or vomiting. For more serious side effects, and these are side effects that the patient would need to contact their primary care immediately or call 911 if it's a medical emergency. And these are symptoms involving the heart, like atrioventricular block, severe cardiac dysrhythmias, as well as bronchospasm, although it's less likely being that bisoprolol is a more selective beta blocker. Mechanism of action. So like I said in the slide previously, bisoprolol is a cardioselective beta blocker. It works without intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. It competitively blocks the response of beta-1 receptors, resulting in a block of sympathetic stimulation, which reduces heart rate, blood pressure, as well as heart contractility. It has limited beta-2 receptor activity, which means it has much less side effects revolving around bronchial smooth muscle or the airways that can typically lead to symptoms like those seen in asthma. Bisoprolol is offered in oral tablet form. It comes in a generic 5 mg and 10 mg, as well as the brand Zabita tablets in 5 mg. Dosage recommendations. So for hypertension, initially we're going to start bisoprolol at a 5 milligram dose by mouth once daily, and that can start with 2.5 milligrams once daily in patients with bronchospastic disease. From this initial dose, we can titrate up 10 milligrams and then to 20 milligrams once daily if necessary to achieve adequate response. For the off-label angina pectoris use, we're going to start at 5 to 20 milligrams orally once daily. And for CHF, we're going to start at 1.25 milligrams once daily with a max dose set at 10 milligrams once daily. Dosage adjustments. For renally impaired patients with a creatinine clearance less than 40 mils per minute, we have to start the patient at 2.5 milligrams orally once daily and then titrate up, but with caution. For hepatic, hepatically impaired patients, specifically those with hepatitis or cirrhosis, we're also going to start at 2.5 milligrams orally once daily and then titrate up with caution as well. Warnings and precautions to use of bisoprolol. Anaphylactic reactions, bronchospastic disease, although this is less likely being that this is a more selective beta blocker, thyroid disease, as this medication may mask the signs of hyperthyroidism, heart failure, myasthenia gravis, peripheral vascular disease, pheochromocytoma, renal and hepatic impairment, vasospastic angina, and then it's also too impor important to note that patients should not abruptly discontinue this medication. They should be tapering it to stop it. Here are strong contraindications to bisoprolol use, starting with AV block, second or third degree, cardiogenic shock, overt cardiac failure, and severe sinus bradycardia. These contraindications make sense as bisoprolol is a beta blocker and it's working directly on the heart, having effects in rhythm. Monitoring. We're gonna to need to monitor efficacy of this medication by looking at a reduction in blood pressure, heart rate, angina pain, and frequency of anginal attacks, if that's what we're treating for. 
toxicity of this medication. So we're looking for signs and symptoms of severe hypotension as well as bradycardia. Here are my references. Thank you for your time.